Hi, and welcome to Harvest Bible Chapel, Kuala Lumpur Online. We hope that the following message will be a blessing to you as you seek to walk with the Lord in spirit and in truth. For more information about our church, please visit www.harvestkl.org or click the link in the description below. Christmas can be a very confusing time. At this point in in history, there are so many images and symbols and characters that the average person struggles to understand how it all fits together. We see images of snowmen and winter scenes here in tropical Malaysia and big over overly obese white men in red jogging suits. There's just a lot that's confusing about Christmas, uh, about the season. You go into a mall and you just, you're blitzed by images and sounds, blinking lights. Most people know that it has, it has something to do with Jesus, but, but then they don't know what to do with the images of Santa Claus or snowmen or pine trees or bells or lights, winter scenes. We hear uh, songs speaking of a baby being born in Bethlehem, and then the next song is talking about winter wonderlands or chestnuts roasting over an open fire which you can experience on Pataling Street, They're where they roast the coffee. I mean, they roast the coffee with the chestnuts. The real Christmas story gets lost in all of this. So our goal today is nothing fancy, but simply to go back to this story of Jesus being born. So our passage today is Luke chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles, if you'll open to Luke chapter 2. The passage takes us to three scenes. The first scene is a description of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. And it's almost matter of fact the way it's described. Scene two then takes us nearby to some shepherds who hear the news about Jesus' birth. And then scene three, we are taken to the temple in Jerusalem when Jesus was eight days old. So today we're going to walk through these three scenes in four parts. And so I've got four words, truth, treasure, trial, transformation. Truth, Jesus was real. Treasure, Jesus was unique. Trial, Jesus was born in a troubled world. For transformation, Jesus was born to save the world. So let's look at truth. Jesus was real. We jump into Luke chapter 2, and it um, just immediately we begin to get names of Roman emperors and governors. The author, Luke, gives us the historical time period. It's during the reign of Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. And then it narrows it down even more when it says that it's under the governorship of Quirinius of Syria. So we know immediately that what is about to follow in this passage, it's no mere legend. It's no mere myth. We're talking about real history. This really happened This was a real event. It's also set in Jewish history. Not only does the Bible give us historical reference point in the Roman Empire, it also sets the birth of Jesus in the context of Jewish history. Both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke Uh, give us genealogies leading up to Jesus. For some, these are read quickly 
because it's a lot of names that we don't recognize. But Matthew's genealogy takes us back to Abraham. Luke takes it all the way back to Adam. And what this tells us is we're talking about someone who has real roots in the royal line of David. And so we're told that in this passage, we're told that Joseph needs to go back to his hometown of Bethlehem for a census. Bethlehem was a a nothing town. It wasn't well known for anything except being a town of David, King David of the Bible. The other thing that that we see in this passage in the beginning of Luke chapter 2 is that it is in line with God's big story. The Bible is full of big and bold promises. Going back to Abraham, we're promised that in his line, that his line would be a blessing to every family in the world. That's a big promise. And the only way that promise could be fulfilled is through one being born who could deliver people out of their bondage to sin. Along this line, going back to Adam, is also King David. And we're told in the Bible that someone in David's line would establish God's forever kingdom. Jesus was born in a particular time in history, in a particular place in the world. This really happened. We also learn that Jesus was born in in a family line with great expectation that the one the one who would deliver God's people would come in this family line. The facts in this baby's birth demand a response from us. Treasure. Jesus was unique. The story of Christmas is an unusual one. There's a family uh, that's been attending harvest. Uh, Just yesterday, they gave birth to to a son. But it did not happen in a stable with stinky farm animals. It happened in a hospital. This Christmas story of the birth of Jesus, it deals with a royal family, but it involves no crowns or castles. It deals with the birth of a baby, but one born to a virgin and announced by angels. This little baby in a nothing town in a barn received visitors, but not the ones we might expect. In Luke 2, 8 through 21, were taken to a nearby area where shepherds were with their sheep. Shepherds in these times were social outcasts. They, their work was dirty and hard. They were certainly not the VIPs of any kind of event. Rather, they were humble, nobodies, given a special announcement not given to most others. In a world where some people have special advantages that others do not have, this was not normal. However, the thing is that that's most significant about this, this visitation of angels to visit shepherds was this, was, was the content of what they had to say. So in verses 10 to 12, I'm just going to read this. This is the message from the angel. Fear not, for behold, 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. A manger is a feeding trough in a barn. Born this day in Bethlehem, the city of David is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. There are three words here that are extremely significant. Savior, Christ, Lord. This baby is called a Savior. It's no secret, or at least it shouldn't be, that the world is not the way it should be. Since the beginning of humanity, people have messed up their relationships with each other and messed up their relationship with their creator. I I don't know about you, but even when I try to live rightly, I mess up. But God wants to put the world right. I'm not fit to live in a world that's put right. And that's the dilemma. I need a savior. I need someone to put me right. Actually, the Bible says everyone in all of history is in need of a savior. News of a savior born in the world is huge news. I I mean, I can't emphasize that enough. The angel announced the world's savior was born. This baby born is also called the Christ. Contrary to what you may think, Christ is not Jesus' last name or surname. It's actually a word with meaning. Christ means the anointed one the one coming in the line of David. Sometimes we use the word Messiah. Messiah and Christ refer to the same thing. As a church, we've been walking through the book of Isaiah in the the Old Testament. 700 years before the birth of Jesus, there was a prophecy about a baby born in the line of David who would be born of a virgin. This prophecy further told us the extraordinary nature of the Christ, the anointed one. I'm going to read again what uh, Sarita read earlier from Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. Again, the Jesus comes as the one that this passage, given 700 years earlier, was speaking of. Someone who would establish his kingdom forever. Someone who would establish his kingdom with justice and righteousness. Something our world has not experienced. This baby is also called Lord, which literally means master. One who is truly Lord requires total submission. The word Lord is used by Luke in chapter one, four times to refer to God. And so there's a claim here 
that Jesus goes far beyond what is said of any other human. There have been plenty of times in history when kings and queens have considered themselves deity. And they quickly show that they are as prone to sin as the rest of us. And history has shown that to be so. But this is different. Jesus is revealed by angelic beings to be God. Savior, Christ, Lord. It's no wonder that the angels referred to this as good news of great joy for all the people. It's no wonder that the shepherds went to visit this extraordinary baby. It's no wonder that when they told others what happened, it caused people to wonder, reflect upon it. It's no wonder that Mary treasured all of this and pondered this in her heart. It's no wonder that those who respond in faith to this Savior experience God's true peace. The facts in this baby's birth demand a response from us. Trial. Jesus was born in a troubled world. Imagine Christmas from the perspective of heaven. A world so deep in rebellion against the very one who created the world and everything in it. A world filled with corruption and greed, a world where people who were created in the image of God rejected godliness, choosing self-glory and oppression instead. It must have been a grievous day when God would send his son, a helpless baby, into enemy territory. Not only that, but to choose for this baby to be born in such humble and vulnerable circumstances. Even as a baby, the Gospel of Matthew describes to us, tells us that the news of Jesus' birth became a threat to earthly rulers, so much so that it caused the murdering of male babies in the area. The world did not want the true king. Rescue missions are a risky undertaking. God sacrificed greatly for us. Us, the most undeserving of God's creatures. And I think this might be the most amazing thing about Christmas. It's a story of God's amazing love for us. God became one of us in order to rescue us. The thing is, we we may not feel like uh, we need rescuing at times. When you're eating a, a nice hot plate of nasi lemak. The world seems good. Or listening to an amazing piece of music. Things may feel okay. And it's true. There is beauty to be found in this world. But it's not long before we're confronted by the troubled nature of the world. Just recently, Karen and I were gathered with a group of brothers and sisters in in Christ for, for prayer, and we were enjoying a delicious meal. And the mood suddenly changed when we found out about the wife of one of the men who was there. They're in Malaysia as refugees. The man's wife was stopped by the police. When she showed the authorities her refugee card, they tore it up and sent her to prison to be deported. 
already a refugee because the world is terribly unjust. And then in the place where she seeks refuge, she faces more injustice from the very ones who should be providing protection for her. This is not a unique or isolated circumstance. It's a reminder of the darkness of the world we are in. I just saw in the news this morning, eight 13 and 14 year old girls stabbed a man to death in Canada. These, I, what, what goes on to make the world thus? The angels declared the birth of the baby was good news because the world was in such a dark place. Darkness only brings more darkness. We need light to push darkness back. Jesus was this light. Jesus was born to rescue us from sin. This is the gospel. There's an amazing comment in 1 Peter, which is another book in the New Testament, that that says that the angels are so amazed by this act of love of God that they long to look into it. The angels long to look into this act of love that God would send his son to rescue us. The facts in this baby's birth demand a response from us. Transformation. Jesus was born to save the world. Starting in verse 22, we begin to we begin scene three, when Jesus was eight days old. In order to follow the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. And during this trip, we get to see the reactions of two elderly people in the temple, Simeon and Anna. And and this morning, we'll just look a little bit at Simeon's response to the baby. Simeon, who is elderly at this point, says that he is a righteous man, devout. He takes Jesus into his arms And he says this, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Here's a man who's seen many years pass and undoubtedly seen a lot of babies born in his lifetime. Why is it that this baby in his arms provides hope for Simeon? Moreover, why is it that Simeon can face death peacefully because of this baby? It's because Simeon knew that this baby was the one. The one the prophets spoke of hundreds of years before. The one who would live a pure and holy life the one who would establish his kingdom forever, the one who would feed the hungry and heal the sick, the one who would love outcasts and sinners, the one who would ultimately give his life as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Simeon held the world's savior in his arms. He saw God's salvation This undoubtedly was the greatest moment in Simeon's life. History has seen a great many people do many great things. No matter how strong or how smart, none of them could take the weight of the world's problems like Jesus, 
Jesus alone was born a savior to the world. He was Christ the Lord, born in the city of David. The facts in this baby's birth demand a response from us. When you think about Jesus, how do you see him? Do you see Jesus as a nice little baby in a nice little story? If so, you've missed the real significance. Jesus was born so that you might have new life, a transformed life, a life filled with true joy and real hope. When you look into who Jesus is, do your eyes see salvation in Jesus? The facts in this baby's birth demand a response from us. We, we, we can't just hear this and go on with life. We're making a choice either to embrace who Jesus is or reject what we hear. In a, in a moment, we're going to sing O Holy Night. Probably my favorite of the Christmas carols. The, one of the, the verses says this, O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error, pining, till he appeared, and then the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morning.